think that we've seen an unprecedented assault on our media. Uh, we've seen an, a deep villainization of our free press. Um, this, and in fact, a war on objectively true information. That when something is reported that someone does not like, you can just say it's not true, whether it is or not. You can try to undercut the messenger and talk about how, no, these are just biased reporters, don't listen to them, when in fact often these are fair reporters who've worked very hard to get things right. That, that has real ramifications. I mean, we're, we're facing the prospect of living in a world that is post-truth, where, where there are no objective truths, where, uh, where you can tell me the sky is purple or the sky is green when in fact we're looking at it and we see that it's blue. That becomes very dangerous potentially for democracy, right? Because in, in a world in which the truth is unknowable, how do we make governing decisions? And then also, how do we hold people accountable? How do we demand better of our elected officials if our elected officials do not have to deny, who do not have to acknowledge reality at any point in time, right? They can just tell us that no, they did not say the thing they said. No, this policy would not do the things we know it would do. I think that's particularly dangerous. And I think that it's difficult. I mean, I, I don't think that there's any coincidence in the fact that our press freedoms are one of the first things that our founders enshrined in our Constitution. I think there's a reason for that because what they saw through their own experiences, with the, their ability to tell the truth, their ability, whether it be through the penny press or, or, or through spoken word, what was what sparked their revolution. And they knew that safeguarding that, that potential in those outlets were what would one day give the United States of America the capacity to deal with an ex existential threat. And I think that that's what we face now, is, is the potential of having our press so undermined uh, that it can no longer be a safeguard of our democracy. And we've seen this, right? We've seen, we've seen this going back several years, this idea that somehow the media must be held accountable instead of the elected officials being held accountable. We saw this in Ferguson. We saw, because um, we love, as a society, as a culture, to attack messengers when the message is something that makes us feel uncomfortable. So reporters who reported on things like police shootings and race and justice became the targets because if only you could discredit them, if you could prove they had some vendetta or some bias, that they were, that they were really just some liberal operative, then you didn't have to engage at all with what they were saying. And so what we've seen is reporters being attacked personally, whether it be through threats, whether it be through their addresses being published, whether it be through uh, smear campaigns trying to undermine things, people not approaching their work or their correspondences in good faith. And again, I think this is particularly dangerous um, because it allows this undermining of the norm of, of journalists, by and large, being good people trying to do good work, who get it right more often than they get it wrong. And that is the reality. But when the public stops believing that it's the reality, it raises real questions about our ability to do our job. Mm -hmm.